Do you ever have trouble getting your goal? You set a goal, you work towards it, and you push, 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 you fight and you force, whether it's with women, dating, sex, money, health, but it just doesn't seem to happen. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the power of intention, understanding your intention, what you're focused on in relationship to creating your goal. Most people, I find, focus on the wrong thing, and therefore, they get the wrong results. Now, with that said, this is Brian, of course, and I'm coming to you from Tulum. I had to think about that again. Uh, here they're working on the cenotes here. This, this is going to be uh, a spas, and there's a cenote down here. That's a hole in the ground. We talked about it in last week's video. They're basically meteors. I said asteroids, but meteors that hit the ground created these holes. There's like 10,000 holes in the ground here that have filled up with water. They have fish, and they're considered very spiritual. Some of them are actually have been created, somehow got underground. I don't know how it all works. And people swim through caves, they swim through the cenotes. It's, it's quite beautiful. At least that's the story I've been told. So um, we're going to take a walk here through. I just went through a cobweb. We're going to take a walk here uh, for a little bit like we always do. Uh, you'll enjoy the background. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about this intention idea. Now, what do I mean by... Uh, I love how they let everything kind of overgrow in here. It gets kind of crazy. It's the jungle, right? Um... It's, it's part of the beauty of it. In the United States, everything would be cut back so you don't get hit by leaves. And, and uh, they don't have many lights here at night either. It's so dark when you walk around. It's ridiculous. And as I'm adapting that, I like it so much better. It really <laughs> it makes it easier to sleep because you're not walking around in all this light. It, it tells you it's time to go to sleep. But anyways, uh, let's dive in. Let's talk about this idea of intention. What do I mean by intention? Well, intention is a really interesting idea. I find that most people when they're focusing on a goal, have the wrong intention. There's a book out there called The Book of Five Rings. And uh, The Book of Five Rings is an interesting book. It's, a, it's about the most famous samurai that ever lived. I think it's around the 1500s or 1600s. And he had, I think it was 50 duels to the death and won them all. He'd fought in several war campaigns uh, and he'd been fine, came out just fine. And I believe he wrote the book when he was you know, older and he was going to retire from everything. And, and it was, and he wrote this book on strategy, understanding the mindset of what it is to become a samurai, to become the best samurai. And what he did was really interesting. And this is, this is very important to understand when you want to accomplish any goal. He asked himself, and I think a lot of people don't give this any consideration. You know, a lot of people would say, if I want to become a samurai, I'm just going to be the best samurai. I'm going to work hard to be the best samurai and do exactly what I believe good samurais do, but he didn't do a real internal inventory of what that looks like, what that feels like. So what this samurai did was a little different. Now I'm not going to butcher his name. You guys can put it in the comments if you want. Uh, that'd be awesome if you did. Um, but uh, what he did was really interesting. He asked himself, and I ask all my clients to do this, what makes an awesome samurai? What is the best samurai? What are the qualities? What is the nature of the best samurai? Or what makes the best samurai the best samurai? I guess is a good way to put it. You have to get really inquisitive. You have to kind of get curious inside. And he came up with one simple answer. He said the best samurai is the best killing machine. He was chasing enlightenment, he said, through killing. So he had to become the best killing machine. So he started focusing on this idea of being the best killing machine. He didn't focus on the idea of being the best samurai. And I want you to think this is a very important distinction. He's not trying to be the best samurai. He's going to be the best killing machine. Therefore, he will be the best samurai. Now, why is that distinction so important when it comes to an intention? Because if you think about it, the best samurai might be going to a class and he's learning to dress perfectly right. He's learning to wear those funky flip-flops. He's making himself look a certain way. So he, when he's walking around, people see him and go, wow, that's a good samurai. He's got everything just perfect. He's learning to strike exactly like they say, so it looks really clean and beautiful. But does that make him the best killing machine? Is his intention focused on becoming this elite killer? No. His intention is focused on looking good looking like a samurai, feeling like a samurai from the outside. So when people see you, they say, that is a samurai. That guy's got it together. But that doesn't make you the best killing machine. What he did was he stopped worrying about wearing the right shoes, dressing the right way, looking a certain 
way that a samurai is supposed to look. And he started focusing on the question, that simple question over and over again in his mind. When he was learning, for example, to strike, and he's learning to cut one of these trees a specific way, right? And say, say it's one of those bamboo trees and he's cutting at a perfect angle to cut through it. He's asking himself, how do I use this to kill as fast as possible? Not just how do I cut a bamboo tree perfectly, but how do I use this to kill as fast as possible? When he's learning a block, he's saying, how can I turn this block into something that kills this person as fast as possible? And what he realized was all this energy that samurais were putting into looking like a, like a good samurai was a waste of time. He didn't worry about, oddly enough, bathing perfectly, dressing perfectly. He was disheveled. He looked dirty a lot. Sometimes he'd even fight with a wooden sword. He used surprise attack. He started to get all these strategies for killing and he stopped worrying about being perfect. There's a big difference between those two. And in that, he became the best samurai. Now we see this everywhere, right? Think about martial artists. You go out and you want to be a black belt in martial arts. You want to be a badass, so you focus on becoming a black belt in martial arts. And then you go out and take some martial art that is just uh, giving away black belts in nine months and you've got your black belt, you're doing these pretty kicks in the air, and you still can't fight. You get your ass whooped the first time you get in a real fight with somebody that knows how to take a punch. And you swing at them, it does nothing. You learn to break bricks. Bricks don't punch back, right? And you don't really ask the question, how is this helping me to defeat somebody in combat, especially somebody that knows how to fight? Some martial arts, when I was growing up, they, they, they had good techniques and good principles that worked decently on an untrained fighter that was afraid to fight but when I started getting in the ring with people that knew how to fight all those techniques went out the window what was left pressure tested martial arts boxing judo jiu-jitsu the stuff where you actually had to learn to deal with the tension that came up and you had to learn in the moment and it was about subtle micro movements it wasn't about these fancy techniques these fancy kicks flying through the air Matter of fact, the best martial artist that knew how to fight, that truly knew how to fight, didn't have these fancy kicks, didn't have these fancy styles. Think of Chuck Liddell, right? He had his arms wide, he had this awkward fighting stance when he would fight, he looked different. When you see some of these MMA fighters, they look very different than these trained martial artists that are just practicing being martial artists. Now, if you just want to be a martial artist and do fancy kicks, which I love to do, by the way. I was a Taekwondo guy when I was young. And I love to do all these crazy wild kicks and, 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 uh, and mix it with some boxing and stuff like that. It's fun for me. But would I use that if somebody attacked me in a bar? Probably not. You know, that would be like me trying to do a spinning heel kick to the head in a bar is about as smart as, you know, well, it's not. <laughs> you know, so uh, now I'm not promoting fighting, but you get the idea, right? And I use the Book of Five Rings to understand this idea. So let's take it a step deeper. Lester Levinson, Eckhart Tolle, both became enlightened very fast, if you talk about enlightenment consciousness. Lester Levinson, three months, Eckhart Tolle instantly overnight. You know what? Neither of them were focused on being enlightened. Eckhart Tolle we can kind of throw out because he was just depressed and his whole ego collapsed in one night with one simple question and he woke up. But let's go back to, to Lester Levinson for a second. Lester Levinson, again, wasn't focused on being enlightened. He was focused on what? Having love for everybody. He determined that being happy was loving everyone. He said, I can't control whether people love me, which always made me happy, because all he really wanted to be was happy. And he had two weeks to live, and he wanted to experience happiness before he died. So he focused on loving everybody and everything because he could realize he could control that through the releasing process, the letting go process. And in that process of just nonstop 24 hour a day practice of forgiving, letting go, basically loving everybody, that focus of how can I experience more love right now for that? How can I experience more love right now for that? Oh, this noise in the background is triggering me. How can I experience more love for that? How can I experience love for the people that are using that construction equipment and just learn to love them and give them love or have love coming out of my body, just let it go completely. That's what he was doing over and over and over again all day long. And his body ended up healing. He began to wake up and ultimately he became enlightened. In three months, he was just living in bliss all the time. Um, let's take my, my friend Ani. And Ani, if you watch this video, definitely comment on it. He's a great guy. 
Um, when I was talking to Ani, he did the same thing. He didn't even know who Lester Levinson was. He wasn't focused on being enlightened either. He focused on loving everybody in the subway in New York. <laughs> and I thought that was awesome. He's like, I was sitting there one day really depressed and sad. And I thought, what if I could just love everybody on the subway? And he said, I'd, every day I'd ride the subway to sit on there and practicing loving everybody. Then I started loving everybody in New York. Same thing Lester did, because Lester was in New York when he did it. Until he reached a point that he had love for everybody and everything. He reached this point where he felt the same thing. He was just walking around in bliss all the time, peace. And when you think about it, that they unconsciously, accidentally found the proper intention. You know, if I want to make money, I can focus on getting money, but that's not going to work. That's why everybody screws it all up. What, what is somebody that's good with money? What are they, what are they experiencing, right? What goes on inside of them? And as I look at people that are really good with money, they have a love and appreciation for money, for, for the process of making money, for spending money, the helping others. Like, like I remember one of my friends, he made $80 million in one year in his business. I don't know what his personal income, I can't remember what it was, but in uh, property development, I, now I knew him when he was younger. He was only making a, like a few million in his business a year. And uh, he would always write, I hope this money, whenever he wrote a bill to somebody, like to the, to the utility company, he'd say, I hope this, this bill, whoever sees this check, because he was sending in checks at that time, I hope this, this check blesses you, this money blesses you and your family, helps to feed your family. He was constantly paying bills and giving away money with love whenever he spent money. And he, he never held any resentment towards the money. He saw the money going out there and working and making people happy, stimulating the economy. So every time he hired somebody new, employed somebody, he took care of them, paid them well, he blessed them, right? So when you begin to understand that if you love the flow of money, how it works, how it blesses the world, how it stimulates growth for other people, then they want to grow back and how that works, you begin to understand. You're asking the right questions now. My intention is to understand and love the flow of money through the world and be a channel for it. That's very different than trying to get money. How about women? You can try to get women, get validated. I see that a lot. Or you can work on loving and enjoying women, setting them free, uh, loving their sexual desires and their sexual, like, like guys that are good at having sex are like, yeah, I love it when a woman gets turned on. Like I, I would never shame her for liking sex. I go, oh my God, it's beautiful to watch her enjoy her body. Now he may love monogamy and really want a woman that hasn't been with a lot of people, but he still wouldn't shame her for loving and enjoying sex. It's a beautiful thing, you know? And I see so many guys do that. I want to get women, but I'm judging women all the time. I want to get sex, but I'm judging sex all the time. So you have to become the giver of the thing that you want to create. You have to become good at it. You have to begin to appreciate it. In the Book of Five Rings, he was phenomenal at killing because he, in a weird sort of way, I would imagine, he worked on having love and appreciation for the whole killing process, which just seems awkward to me and weird. I would never want to do that. But you get the idea. A great gardener loves creating life, right? And why, I used to have all these fish tanks, planted fish tanks with plants coming out of them and ecosystems rolling inside. And the, the fish would grow really big and healthy because they had a full ecosystem inside, all the different right uh, elements and the, the bacteria in the water and everything. I loved creating life in there and creating that ecosystem. It wasn't just having a plant and fish tank. It was the whole love for the whole ecosystem and bless and getting it so that the fish in a weird sort of way were feeding the plants with their with their poop and shit. And the, the plants with their oxygen were feeding the fish. And then there was algae in there that, that helped everything to grow. And then there were creatures that fed on the algae and then the right bacteria in the water. The love of the whole process of creating this symbiotic relationship for everybody to thrive in. That's whether that's dating, whether that's money or whatever. It all comes back to this idea of loving the thing, the process of the thing you want to create and getting in touch with that process, you know? 
And so I want to invite you into this idea to ask that question. What is it to be good at what I want to be good at? If you want to be good at approaching, can you fall in love with the whole idea of approaching? You're just trying to prove something. You're just trying to get somewhere. It's not like I'm going to be good at approaching. It's like, what is it? What are the qualities of somebody that is good at approaching? Well, they love to approach. They love the tension of the moment. They enjoy the eye contact. They enjoy the spontaneity, the unknown, because every person you approach is going to be an unknown. You never know what they're going to say, what they're going to do. And there's a whole excitement in that, that whole idea of the unknown. This all has to be looked at and brought together in that intention. And then you develop that out. And now you're getting the right idea. You might convey all that down into one simple idea, being the best killing machine. Um, loving making women smile within the first 30 seconds because I enjoy them so much. That might make you a great approacher, or at least get you started. And, uh, and then you might change it as you start to get good at that. And what's the, what's the intention of having a great long, comp, like 10 minute conversation? It's really digging in and understanding the depth of what makes her tick. And what would that be like? And can I fall in love with that? Can I not do it as a technique to get something, but can I fall in love with the process of, of being giving to this beautiful woman in front of me by really being truly authentically curious, developing real curiosity, not fake curiosity from the body in her. All of these qualities get developed. See the rock climbing wall? <laughs> I love this place, man. They have rock climbing classes in here. Um, and all these qualities get developed by you learning to feel your body. See, I can experience love, curiosity, turn on joy for something and develop that quality out, like the Book of Five Rings, the Samurai, by, by having good embodiment, knowing what curiosity actually feels like, what love actually feels like, what it feels like to turn on your heart, what an oxytocin response feels like what it feels like to ground it in the ground. As I get good at those things, I can start to associate those things with the activities that I want to uh, experience. And I can start to create, everything is a flow from one thing to another. And you gotta be in balance with everything. And that's what the intention does. As you get good at the intention, you're gonna get good at experiencing that flow, at seeing what the flow is with the thing you wanna get good at. Meeting women, sex, having an amazing relationship, there's always gonna be a symbiotic balance and you gotta take care of it. And that intention, that intention, what you're focused on, the thing you're looking at is everything. That's what's important, how you view it. So you gotta ask yourself a lot of questions. What is it to be really good at this? What are the qualities of being good at this? What would it feel like in my body to be good at this? What would it, uh, how would the, how would other people feel if I was really good at this? How would they see me? And, and get really clear about that. Start to study that idea. Okay, hopefully you're getting this idea. By the way, I wanna invite you to like, subscribe, and share. I haven't done that yet. I wanna invite you to comment. If you have an experience with this, comment. If you think your intention's off, comment. I talk about, like, I've been focused on getting women to like me versus and now I realize the, the art of, of, of enjoying a woman is liking her. It's like giving her this, this, this enjoyment of her, her eyes, that's authentic, that's real. And I'm going to focus on that from now on. And that will stimulate the response. It's just like if you get angry at somebody, they get angry back at you. So start to comment. Comment where you're off in your intention and how you're going to correct it, what you're going to experiment with to fix the process. And... Uh, Got these cool hanging chairs here. So, um, I think that's it. I want to see those comments. I'll be looking for them. Um, and uh, remember, only the confident really live. Check out thefearlessman.com if you want to sign up for more stuff, or uh, brianbeijan.com, which will be uh, completely redeveloped soon. And uh, by the way, guys, I'm going to be developing a new YouTube, a new Instagram, a new Rumble, all kinds of stuff, a professional podcast, professionally shot. There's so much good content coming out. Uh, it's all kind of a lot of it shot already. I'm just uh, getting everything in place for the big launch of everything that's coming up. So uh, be ready for that. Definitely comment below if you saw this part of the video and you're interested in that stuff. There's going to be a whole new membership site coming up for brianvasion.com too. Love you guys. Uh, remember, only the confident really live. 
And um, I got to come up with another another uh, saying for Brian Bajan. <laughs> what, what should I say? What, what should be the closing in the future? Anyways, uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. Have a beautiful day. This is Brian in Tulum, Mexico, and uh, I'm out.